almost midnight. And you guys can see minus 32 right now. Celsius, that's about minus 25 Fahrenheit. Ingredients, egg carton, dryer lint, old man's beard, wood pile shavings, scraps, broken uh, crayons, and recycling vibes. Homemade fire starters, congrats on 100,000 subscribers. Pete, it's from a good friend of mine. And uh, I'm gonna be using his homemade fire starters tonight.
you can see my breath I've got the door wide open on purpose it's only like five degrees Celsius in here right now but that's fine it's perfect for eating because this is this food is really hot I grated some cheese on the potatoes while it was cooking so this place smells like chicken cheese grease and potatoes <laughs> and uh, smoke it got smoky in here because it was splattering all over the stove and uh, that cooktop on that stove is incredible the heat was even and it just cooked so evenly man amazing so anyway if there's if there's animals out there that want that like cheese and chicken and i think every single animal on earth does <laughs> they're probably wondering what's going on in that guy's tent is there going to be any chicken and cheese left over now some of this some of the spice burnt to the food but that's okay Oh man. Yes. Oh. That cheese was a stroke of genius. Just thought of it last second. That potato is perfect right there. Oh man. That is cooked perfectly. Oh baby. Now, this chicken, I love a really crispy skin on chicken. That's why I like thighs. And a part of me was wondering if, oh, well, can you hear that skin? Oh man. I was wondering if I cooked it long enough because there's bone in, in this chicken as well. But that is perfectly cooked. Listen to this crunch. Mmm. Mmm. So, I'm gonna eat this, have a little nightcap, and go to bed. I'll see you guys in the morning. It's almost midnight. You guys can see minus 32 right now. Celsius, that's about minus 25 Fahrenheit, March 25th. Can you believe that? Crazy. So I gotta go check the chimney. Had a bit of a backdraft this morning with the stove, the wind is pretty pretty nuts out there. So I've had it happen to all my stoves or I've had a night or two of backdrafts. And uh, it was, this stove was deadly overnight, it was really good. I had a good five hour burn with it and no issues. But the wind picked up this morning and then this morning when I, uh, when I re uh, loaded the stove at about 6 a.m., I went back to sleep, and then there, I was starting to get this pulsing sound, and there was a bit of smoke coming back through the through the opening of the, the stove, the draft. And so I spoke with Jerry about it, and he has a bunch of theories. And so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go check the chimney. He said there's a chance that even though the chimney swivels to prevent it from causing a backdraft, Sometimes they get stuck with creosote and with ice and melting and freezing and all that sort of stuff. So I got to go bang that off now and see if it uh, see if it's stuck. And uh, if it's stuck, that's likely the culprit. Um, I've had this happen with all of my stoves. There was one time with the barrel stove earlier this year. I woke up and the place was fully smoked out. So it happens. I got to go see. Oh, he's swiveling. Yeah, swiveling good, so that's not the issue. The wind is pretty strong though, so I don't know if that's a contributing factor or what. But uh, yeah, it's swiveling pretty good. It's not happening now, obviously the stove's fine, everything's good, but you know, it's a new stove, I'm learning it 
I just want to make sure I've got everything figured out. So the current temperature outside is minus 22, but it was minus 30 just a couple of hours ago. So there's a chance that my snowmobile over there is not going to want to start. bucket I'm going to show you guys how crazy this draft is on this stove. It's nuts, man. Take a little bit of that snow. Look at that. So I'm using this. This uh, like metal tray thing here that came from my other stove as a trivet, and it's perfect, man. A little bit of air gets underneath here. That should help with reducing the intensity of the heat. So you might be wondering why I have a pee bucket. And I didn't always have a pee bucket. This is a new thing for me within the last year. I, uh, if you get up in the middle of the night and it's minus 35 to minus 40 Celsius outside, which is almost minus 40 Fahrenheit, and you leave the tent, <laughs> and you gotta like I don't sleep with pants on so I'd have to put on the pants I mean I could come out without pants on just put on my boots and do it I have done that but I'll tell you it wakes you up it wakes you up bad and uh, it's hard to get back to sleep after you've been shocked by the cold uh, it's uh, it's alarming sometimes when it hits you so it's just like here's my little bathroom within the tent so I wake up in the middle of the night and I just use the the bucket and then in the morning I uh, I dump it out when we grew up uh, my family we had a small cottage like a, a really small cottage in um, in New Brunswick and uh, we had a pee bucket in the cottage because there was an outhouse like there was a whole bunch of cottages it was called the square and there was a whole bunch of cottages and every cottage had a pee bucket because none of the cottages had um, little bathrooms. They just didn't. They were, they, were, they were that small. There was no bathrooms in the cottages. So there was a giant outhouse that uh, it was communal. Everyone would share it. So in the morning, um, you know, it would be either me or my brother or my sister. My, my mom and dad would say to us, someone's got to go do the pee bucket. Jay, it's your turn. Go do the pee bucket. So I'd, I'd take the pee bucket and I'd go to the outhouse and there would be You'd see people coming out of their cottages in the morning with their pee buckets. And then we'd go, you know, you dump it out in the toilet in the, in the outhouse. And then you, there'd be a hose outside of the, uh, the outhouse and you just spray down the bucket. Pour it out, bring it back to the cottage, and do it all over again the next day. So yeah, I grew up with pee buckets. And the, uh, it, here, I stay warm. You know, I get up, do my thing, right back in bed. Out like a light.
can't leave this tent unless it's in perfect condition. I, I, I want to show up and have it completely swept out and completely tidy and everything put back where it belongs. So that way I can just start enjoying myself right away when I show up. That's super dry, that is. And this will serve me until I'm done for the day. I'm, I'm hoping. Look how fast that lit up. Wow. Just wanted to go. So here in Canada, we've got multiple brands of bacon. Canadians love their bacon, that's for sure. That's no secret. And this is a President's Choice bacon. And I always get President's Choice bacon whenever I can because of this. 500 grams. And it's the same price as some of the other big name bacon uh, producers in the country. And they sell it for the same price but at 375 grams. Remember when everything was a pound of bacon? And then, you know, I mean, all food has kind of done that. Chocolate bars are smaller. Price hasn't gone down. Um, just the way it goes, I guess. I have a bag here, and this is all of my dirty dishes. So sometimes I do my dishes here, and sometimes I don't. Sometimes, like this was the cup I had my tea in last night. Here's the plate I had, for, I had uh, my supper on. Now it does look pretty clean. I did wipe it down with an alcohol pad. So I, I could use that again. I had some chips last night. So I put everything in here and do this and then I throw it. Once I collected all of my, my dirty dishes that I don't really want to fully clean here. And then I just take them with me and I throw them in the dishwasher when I get home. bit fatty. I didn't growing up, but now I do. Baby, that is good. Fatty, delicious. That bacon crisped up so fast. That took, I would say, four to five minutes <laughs> to make all of this. That stove's so hot. Mmm. 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 The little tray beside my stove that attaches to the stove, it gets pretty darn hot. And I can just leave the water on it. I realized that this morning. I didn't think it would be this hot. And it keeps it like almost like a, at a low simmer. Pretty incredible. You always need a bit of time with the stove to figure it out, like to 
to really figure out how it performs its best. So this was my first overnighter with the stove. Performed flawlessly overnight. Once that wind picked up, there was a little bit of that, that drafting, but it's something that I've experienced many times out here. And so uh, I've just gotta, I gotta dial it in. And uh, yeah, amazing food. Nice and fatty, just the way I like it. I like my food to be really fatty when I'm out here. Salty as heck. And uh, yeah, the lights were pretty nice. You know, the northern lights are interesting because when there's no northern lights and there's no moon, it's really dark out there, like almost black. And uh, when the northern lights come, they just, they light up the land. It's really interesting how they do it. I mean, it's not like, it's not like the sun, <laughs> it's not like that, but I could probably walk across the lake no problem and really see what's happening. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I really did. I had a great time out here. It was just camping. I'm getting in as much as I can. So yeah, thanks so much for watching. I'll be back really soon.